my name is Talat Yakub, and I am a feminist. <laughs> Yes, yes, you are a donut. So brave. Uh, some of you in the room might think that this might be my opportunity to be on a stage and burn a bra. It's a common misconception and something that has never actually happened in the feminist movement ever. Oh, women are still very much in the habit of pointlessly destroying all the shit men give them for free. You just can't burn things in public anymore because of the insane health and safety dystopia we've been gradually sliding under for the past 50 years, but I'm sure that's all men's fault. Uh, it certainly won't be happening today, mainly because this was super expensive. Thank you for finally noticing. Is it because some of you pay taxes now? Secondly, you might be thinking that I'm here to only speak to the women in the room. Another common misconception. Uh, no. Wasn't under that impression. I'm aware that you're communicating with men. For instance, I'm a man and I can hear you saying that sentence. Wait, what? And the most unhelpful, perhaps. I'm here to speak to absolutely every single person in this room because Yep. In your case, that is probably the most unhelpful thing you can do. Because women's rights are human rights. Unlike men's rights. Which is some kind of hate group or something, right? And a third and final misconception. Uh, you might be thinking that I'm here to take you to the nearest protest or revolution. <laughs> the only revolution you understand is your fucking hamster wheel. You don't protest anymore because you're too fucking dizzy. I asked the organizers, they said no. I'm afraid you're gonna have to stay in your seats and have a mini revolution just whilst you're sitting. In other words, spin on it. So today, I want to talk to you about the journey of a woman, the journey of inequality. Those are two very different things. The journey of equality would involve equal rights under the law, such as the right to genital integrity, parental custody, and a fair trial. The journey of a woman, as you alluded just now, involves sitting her ass down on a fucking chair and listening to some empty rhetoric about perpetual fucking victimhood. Too often, I've been told that feminism is a thing of the past. Should be a thing of the past. I think that's probably what people are trying to tell you. It's 2014. Women have equal rights. No, they don't. They have more rights than men. More human rights, bodily autonomy, legal autonomy, parental autonomy. And it's largely because no matter how many human rights we strip away from men, no matter how many deranged entitlements we give to women, lying cunts like you will always come along and completely fucking lie to everyone about everything. They can vote. They can own property, they can have jobs, they can run for parliament. We've got equality, right? Wrong. This had better be really fucking good. If you scratch away at the surface, even here in the UK, you realise that we're still fighting the same battles that we have been for decades. We've just decided to pretend that we have equality. The legal system is pretend, do you see? We're just pretending to mutilate babies. We're just pretending to throw innocent men in prison with impunity. We're just pretending nearly a third of our fucking children are growing up with no men in their lives. We're just pretending the government will not only pay women to rape men, but pay them out of the pockets of their rape victims. But in reality, what? Fucking cat calls? Can't reach the top shelf? What's up? I want to talk to you about why we need to reclaim the word feminism. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, that is the top priority. I keep forgetting. Because actually, we have pandered to not using the word feminism. <laughs> we certainly have. We excuse it. We justify our use of it. I think excusing and justifying our use of a word is the opposite of pandering to not using it. <laughs> not that I have any fucking idea what you're talking about. In fact, we refer to it as the F word. Yes, like the fucking N word. Like the previous fucking F-word. <laughs> Feminism has overtaken fucking as the most offensive thing you can do with the letter F. My, would, my money would have been on felch. <laughs> nah, never stood a chance. Now, the last time I did that was when I was pretending not to swear in front of my mum. 
Yes, probably, because every time your mother hears that word, it's from someone shouting it aggressively. So she has some negative associations with it. People have that attitude regarding the word feminism because every feminist they've ever spoken to has proved themselves to be one dissenting argument away from vindictive, hysterical, self-centered bigotry. So let's reclaim it. And I want you to reclaim it by going through the journey of a woman and the need for feminism. Pay close attention, folks. This is why we need bigotry. But this comes with a disclaimer. This isn't the story of every woman in the world. Some stories are easier. Some stories don't go through the inequalities that I'm about to express to you. Other stories are significantly more heartbreaking. In a short period of time, I can't take you through every story, but each and every story is important to feminism because each and every experience of a woman's social injustice is part of the tapestry on which feminism is woven. Good, good. I presume you're going to include all the injustices that work in women's favor. The injustices that work in women's favour. No, but but yes. If you're having trouble digesting that phrase, or indeed even conceiving of such a mythical space turtle of a beast, then you might want to pop out for a few minutes while I talk to the people who aren't bigots. I'm going to be putting together the journey of a woman that most people in this room will be able to relate to. So let's take that journey together. I appreciate the whole immersive format but i am fully aware that no journey is actually taking place you're telling us a story of no one in particular by the way starts from birth well perhaps it does but in fact it starts from the womb the minute we find out whether it's a boy or a girl because we live in a society where even in 2014 there are parts of our culture that celebrate the birth of a boy more than they celebrate the birth of a woman you give birth to girls, not women. Small point, but probably a slip on your part. More to the point, there are parts of our society that celebrate the birth of a girl more than a boy. That's why there are so many families with like four boys in a row and then one girl. Because they stop when they hit gold. Yes, the opposite happens, but just because the opposite of it happens does not mean it does not happen. Some parents would prefer a boy at this stage some parents would prefer a girl at this stage. It's actually kind of normal. Not necessarily right, but it's normal. We live in a culture where we gender stereotype dependent on something as arbitrary as colour. Do we? Oh, you mean if it's a boy, you have to snip part of it away so you can see the purple bit? I hope you're talking about genital mutilation, because if I was talking about the hardships through which babies go, I'll tell you what, I'd start with the genital mutilation that affects a third of the men on this planet. That's quite a journey, isn't it? And as they say, every journey begins with an anaesthetized <laughs> genital torture. <clears throat> That's what you meant, right? That's the magnitude of senseless inhumanity you're about to bring up, right? Pretty pink for girls. Old blue for boys. No, it's a fucking hard knock life, I know. Um, I was recently blessed with a niece, and being the absolutely fantastic auntie that I am, I naturally wanted to buy her absolutely everything that I could find. Would you have done that for a nephew? Just wondering. And uh, being also the feminist auntie that I am, I had to go to not one, not two, but five different stores to find something remotely gender neutral. Shit! You had to go shopping in five different stores! My god, that's like the time I had to go drinking in five different pubs, you dickhead! Whilst girls have- thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm here all week. Try the chicken. One person in the room. It'll be everybody by the time I'm done. Or else. By the time I had got there, uh, I decided that I didn't want anything pink, and the colour for gender neutral is egg yellow. No, the colour for gender neutral is any colour you like. Who the fuck told you it's yellow? Many thanks, Hallmark. <laughs> right, well, don't listen to Hallmark then, if you don't appreciate their attempt to solve this problem you insist on having. Uh, other gender stereotyping retailers are available. <laughs> of 
with gender stereotyping clothes and gender stereotyping changing rooms. I know, it's like trying to be a sexually monomorphic species in Nazi Germany! Let's move on to a young girl. We live in a society where gender stereotyping has gone so far that we have changed what science means. Yes. For instance, feminists have convinced millions of people that there are more than two genders. Despite no scientific sense ever being made of this claim without the semantic bullshit. Plus, feminists have convinced millions of people that gender is entirely a social construct, but conveniently enough only when it negatively affects girls. They thereby reach the conclusion that when boys can't do things, it's because boys are deficient. And when, bu when girls can't do things, it's because boys are holding them back. Is that roughly what you're about to say? Say this seven-year-old girl needs a present and you go into a shop. Aside from being bombarded with an aisle of pink and an aisle of blue, we've decided to gender science. Now, I don't know about you, but when I did biology and I did chemistry, I was doing the same experiments as the boys in the class. I was being taught in the same way as the boys in the class. I was paying about as much attention as the rest of the boys in the class. However, now we have science kits that are science, real science for boys, and science that is perfume making kits for girls. Yes, collective sigh. Toys. I mean, yes, our education system is gender neutral until it comes to the quotas. But what about the toys that girls and boys prefer playing with? How do you think toy companies work? Do you think fat, bald men sit around a table and go, we will oppress them with perfume? <laughs> no, they do market research. They show the educational chemistry sets to little girls and the little girls go, this is boring, I don't like it. And then they show them the perfume shit and they go, yay, I like perfume, it smells good. And lo and behold, when they market the chemistry sets and the perfume kits, the more, more boys get the chemistry sets and more girls get the perfume kits. You cannot blame the patriarchy for the cold, empirical fact that little girls can be shallow, okay? Shallow in a different way from boys, but still fucking shallow, please, for the love of Pete, deal with it. We are in a society where the biggest insult a young boy can get in the playground is don't be such a girl. Bollocks. It's gay. <laughs> it's gay. Being called a girl is an obvious poetic exaggeration because you're obviously not a girl. Being called gay is actually insinuating a possibility that you don't love women. And there is no worse insult. I'm not quite sure when gay becomes misogynist, but it does. What does that teach young boys about what girls are worth? Heaven and hell. Weak? Inferior? To be protected. To be elevated. What does that tell young girls about what their worth is? It tells them they're fucking goddesses. And you appear to be telling them that's not good enough. Let's move on to a teen. Uh, just, uh, coffee, thanks. We live in a society where we sexualize and objectify young women. Yes, we sexualize and objectify women by pushing an ideology onto them that objectifies them based on their sex. It's called feminism. The clue is in the fucking name. It's a cliche because it's true. I'm glad that I'm on after Laura. Who's Laura? Fuck Laura. And I'm glad that she put it on in the context of sport because she put up the images that create the culture in which this is allowed to happen. We sexualize and objectify young girls and then we blame them for it. No, you sexualize and objectify girls and then you blame men for it. Recently, I was walking down the street in this very city with a friend and her 15 year old daughter. We walked down the street and a man thought it was acceptable to roll down a window and shout an obesity about this 15-year-old young woman's body. Now, obviously, she meant obscenity there. And I generally overlook those little words, salad errors, because I make them myself. But on this occasion, I think she may have accidentally revealed a detail that she shouldn't have revealed. 
Was this man shouting fat cunt? <laughs> he was, wasn't he? <laughs> that's not sexist, my darling. That's fattest. That's some whole other shit you got to deal with. I've not seen that young woman wear that same top or walk down that street on her own since. Well, then the last thing that poor girl needs is an ideology that pedestalizes her fucking victimhood. I got obscene shit shouted at me when I was 15, but I got the fuck on with my day because I didn't have an insidious goblin like you on my shoulder telling me I'm right to live in perpetual terror. We live in a society where media objectifies women at every corner. You mean it includes women at every corner? And when you see women in the media, you can't quite handle the jealousy. So you refuse to see them as anything but objects, and you refuse to accept that you're the one objectifying them because of your jealousy. The people who actually put women in the media are subjectifying them. They are employing them to be the face of their fucking product. And it's weird. It's almost as though women like having their picture taken and blown up and plastered all over the media. Especially if they look sexy in said pictures. <laughs> Why would women like that? I don't understand. It's almost as though they have self-esteem. We have it in our news. In fact, we have it in our tabloids. You could turn to, oh, I don't know, page three of a tabloid. Oh, <laughs> oh I don't know. <laughs> Let's pick a random newspaper and a random page. Derpity 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 derpity. Oh, page three of the sun. Well, would you look at that? I totally didn't expect to see a woman being fucking fawned over. And you could see objectification next to current affairs. Okay, are you aware of a condition called objectophilia? It's when people are sexually attracted to objects like uh, clocks or lawn chairs or roller coasters. Well, what you're looking at on page three there is a result of a condition one might call gynophilia. In Greek, that is. In Latin, I think it would be something along the lines of... It was feminism. <laughs> what are we telling young men and what are we telling young women about their worth? We're telling men they need to shape the fuck up to suit women and we're telling women they need only stand there and be awesome because they're already awesome. You're doing this. You're blaming it on a non-existent patriarchy, but you're doing it. You're telling women your life is already hard because you're a woman. People should do things for you. People should adopt an ideology just for you without you even having to fucking do anything. Uh, let's move on to working women. We live in a society where women are paid 17% less on average than a man for the same job in 2014. Why must you turn my office into a house of lies? We live in a, in a society where science, engineering and technology are less likely to be taken up by women. Well, when you tell her it's perfume kits, maybe that's why. The door is open for them. They are permitted to buy chemistry sets. And they are not just actively encouraged to take up the sciences, they have massively discriminatory quotas in place to grab every female candidate with open arms and pamper them up and down until they inevitably change to psychology because it's fucking easier. Chemistry departments have been shut down because of precisely this kind of disastrous institutional bigotry. Most girls do not want to go into science. You would know this if you actually listened to them for two fucking seconds rather than pursuing with your own agenda. And your agenda is not to address the absence of women. It is to whinge about the presence of men. If there is any institution, any club, any fucking furnished room in the world that is sullied by a population of more than 50% males, you go on the fucking warpath. And that is why you will always be on the warpath. Until the day you have killed enough males to make it statistically feasible. Fuck you! We live in a society where, although women make up the majority of the workforce, they only make up 20% of the private boards and the top jobs. And fuck all percent of the bottom ones. Go to any warehouse, any industrial section of town, and you will see nothing but men 
Women don't have to lower themselves to those jobs because they're too awesome. And because quotas will always get them a cushy admin job. And women don't get the top jobs because they're somewhat held back by this dogmatic insistence that they're so inherently fucking awesome. It doesn't exactly breed self-improvement. Let's move on to motherhood. We live in a society where we have the illusion of choice. And yet, women who choose not to have a child are considered less of a woman. No, they're not. No, they are not. They're considered less of a mother. Neither woman nor mother is higher than the other. They're twin sides of the same goddess. You don't have to do anything to be a real woman, except have a vagina. The definition of a real man seems to be his willingness to sacrifice his well-being for others. When it comes to the fucking crunch now, doesn't it? The, def the definition of a real woman seems to be... Well, a fat chick, <laughs> if you happen to be talking to a fat chick. Women who do choose to have children are given barriers by not having affordable childcare, flexible childcare to get them into work. They have the option of enslaving the father for 18 years, or any man who they claim to be the father, or just leeching everything they need from the taxpayer. Fuck you, you fucking lying, fucking, fucking liar. We live in a society where if a woman does have a child and gets back into work, we penalise her further. Are you aware that the phrase maternity leave does not in fact mean maternity leave? It means maternity? Well, aren't you committed to this position? Here, have a year's paid vacation because you chose to have a year's paid vacation. Yes, darling, it is not the fucking dark ages. You chose to have a child. The choices you make in life might handicap you. It's called being human. It's called being accountable for your decisions. By not giving her the promotions and the opportunities that she deserves because she took some time off to give birth. Then don't give birth. <clears throat> for the love of Thor, do not breed. Your progeny will be a helpless fuck up as long as you're maintaining this hideously self-entitled attitude. Let's talk about women generally. That's what you've been doing so far. That's all you've done so far. Don't go pretending that until now you've been talking about a specific woman. So every woman in the audience subconsciously thinks it was all about them. Fuck you. All you've done is generalize and fucking lie. We live in a society where one in three will experience violence against them, either physical, sexual or emotional, just for being women. And how many men? Ask men if they've ever, as in even once in their life, experienced physical, sexual, or emotional violence against them that they wouldn't have received if they were female. And I'd estimate you get a response pretty fucking close to one in one. I'm, you know, I'm not the first to make that point, but hopefully I did it justice. Uh, dickhead. We live in a society where every 10 minutes a woman reports a domestic abuse instance. I'm sure if the figure you had in front of you was every 10 minutes a woman experiences a domestic abuse instance, then that is very much what you would announce. Alas, you were duty bound to announce the truth that every 10 minutes a woman reports a domestic abuse instance. <laughs> Alas for us, you were conveniently somewhat less duty bound to reveal how many of those reports were in fact bogus. Bogus attention seeking bullshit that you would never hear coming from the kind of women who are attracted to violent retards. We live in a society where two women a week are killed at the hands of a current or ex-partner and it's become so normal that it's not even hitting the headlines. Because a few years ago, right, lovers and married partners never killed each other. <laughs> they all just worked out perfectly. If it ever did happen, it was international fucking news. Imagine it, of all the kinds of people who might kill each other, it was a couple. <laughs> well, stab me in the face and impale me on a rake. Who saw that coming, ever? This wasn't the story of each and every woman, and it doesn't need to be the story. It doesn't need to be the world that we live in. Unless you're a fucking feminist, in which case it absolutely does need to be. If you're to keep making money disguising your bigotry as charity. You need all women to have a reason to live in fear. You just have to double think your way into pretending that's not exactly what you're fucking saying. Hashtag yes all women. Every single person in this room can create change. Arguably, yes. Start by seeing insane double-think for what it is. 
every person in this room has the power to be a feminist and create change. Roughly translated, everyone in this room has the power to create change by simply joining the feminist movement. We'll do the rest. What if someone in this room decided not to conform to consumerism and bought a young girl an outdoor activity kit, even though it was a boy on the box? Then there's a very high probability that the daughter will not like that toy. That's why they put the boy on the box. It's their way of saying, look, we showed this to girls and most of them went meh. Look, nobody likes market research drones, but this is one avenue where they are actually doing you a service, an empirical service. They test this shit. Feel free to test it yourself, but understand there are established probabilities. If your daughter doesn't like the toy with the boy on the box, don't worry, there's more than a 50% chance that was going to happen. You are not fighting this for her sake. You are very clearly fighting it for your sake. And your sake is bullshit, madam. Listen to your children. They will tell you what they want. I don't particularly like children, but that's one avenue in which they're actually doing you a service. Children are not often shy about telling you what they want. And if they want mechanical toys, give them mechanical toys. If they want human simulation toys, give them human simulation toys. Do anything else and all it is is indoctrination. And I may not stop you doing that to your child, but I reserve the right to, I don't know, dickhead. It's not too radical, really, is it? <laughs> I'm sticking with dickhead. What if someone in this room had spoken to that 15-year-old girl and said it wasn't what you were wearing? It wasn't where you were walking. It wasn't what you had done. It was the obesity. The blame only lies with the perpetrator. I.e. whichever patriarchal shit Lord Force fed me all that cake. What if someone in this room, what if someone in this room, to ask their employer if they pay fair wages for men and women and if they don't, held them to account? And I should hope your employer responds by saying something along the lines of, um, you mean am I breaking the law? No, I'm not breaking the law that has been in place for decades, criminally forbidding any employer from doing that. Your wages are all on the books. It would be an open and shut case. I would go to prison for it. Will there be any more questions? Part-time receptionist whose name I never fucking learned. What kind of world could we create if we challenged the people around us? What kind of world could you create if you challenged yourself? I mean, for one fucking iota of your life. In the next 24 hours, what feminist action can you take on sexism and inequality? Evidently, you can whinge about nothing. That's your only option if you're a Western woman. No wonder all you do is whinge about nothing. Can you join a campaign? Can you eradicate sexism in your own household, in your circle of friends? <laughs> Not if you're a feminist, no. Because that's... Like napalming your entire house to try and get rid of the smell of your own sad, prolapsed weasel flange. Yep, yeah, that's the one. <laughs> you don't want to know what I cut out. Can you challenge somebody when they tell a rape joke because they think it's funny? You certainly can, but you won't get very far. Because you can't actually control people's sense of humour. You very, very scary person. Sexism is nothing more than a construct of society. Oh no, it's a, a lot more than that. It's also a construct of your imagination. It's both. It's sort of mutually causal. But in both cases... Who's responsible? You fucking are! Shalom, shalom. We all love our children. But we are society. The human beings in this room make up society. Imagine if we, each and every one of us, challenged it. Sexism would cease to exist. We would make it abnormal because we've made equality normal. Yada, yada, yada. Everyone should be a feminist and then we'll all be equal. Brilliant. This is what you're saying. Don't pretend you're not. It's not that hard. It's not a far fight. And I look forward to you joining me in that fight and creating a more socially just Scotland, UK, worldwide for all womankind. Thank you. Yeah, pass. I pre would prefer to fight for a more socially just Scotland, UK, worldwide for all humankind. Not just womankind. Because I am not a fucking bigot.
Thank you so very much for your time. I hope you found this as instructive as I did. Goodbye, and uh, thanks for listening. Just get me on a hangout, bro. It'll be awesome. Come on.